So you're in Montreal promoting uh, a new book. Yes. Um, big, beautiful book of bass. How did this come about? Um, well, um, about, I guess, eight years ago, um, somebody made an offer to me in Los Angeles from a music store. Uh, they wanted a piece of my gear that I used with Rush, and in exchange, they offered me a, a vintage bass. And okay. My first reaction was, I don't need old basses. I have enough basses. Right. Uh, but they were very insistent, and, and they suggested a couple of options for me, and so I did a little research on them just out of curiosity, and as I researched these basses from the 50s, I realized that I didn't know much about the invention of my instrument okay. and the evolution of my instrument. And I had held this instrument in my hand for over 40 years. So um, I started doing a deep dive into its history. And, and when I start doing that, forget uh, it, <laughs> because I'm a, a mad collector of things, invariably I came to the, uh, um, you know, problematic a situation where I had fallen down the rabbit hole, so to speak. So, right. Uh, I decided I would collect a few classic basses, and in that process, I would learn about the history of my instrument. And before you know it, I, I was gathering basses at <laughs> great speed, <laughs> and I was also gathering history. I was gathering bits of minutia that were fascinating, and I was also gathering uh, sort of personal stories about the people that own these bases and right. where these bases had been. So it seemed to me one justification for all of this information was to do a book and to tr sort of put the story of the base in one compendium. When you say um, a, a small collection of bases, how many bases are you talking about? How many did you accumulate over this, uh, over this exercise? Well, there's a, <laughs> there's a, I've, I'm, see, I'm embarrassed now. No, but, don't be embarrassed, uh, come on. Uh, there's 250 bases in the book, but the collection has grown since the cutoff date for publication. So I, the collection's up to about 280 now. So are these housed in, in a specific place? Yeah. Because, I mean, you have to... You they're have to in a fortress that has a moat surrounding it, and uh, there's a, a pack of vicious Wild but dog. very cute Norwich Terriers that protect them. Uh, you, so. It has to be temperature controlled wherever they are so they don't warp and stuff, Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. Um, and it's not just a book. I mean, this is like a tome. It's like a... When I, took, when I saw yeah. this thing, this is... I mean, you know, you could, you, you could train with this thing. Yeah, it's, um, eight, it's eight pounds. It, I, and, yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to mail it to a friend of mine, and he said, that's like mailing a baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I said, yeah, sort of. <laughs> um, but it's impressive when you look through this thing. I mean, this is a, you must be pretty proud of this. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I, I had a great team to work with. Uh, my... Dear old friend, uh, uh, Daniel Richler, uh, who's a writer, a journalist, broadcaster, uh, he helped me immensely, uh, you know, argue about every word and, and what <laughs> order they should go in. And, and he helped me form a way of expressing myself uh, so that it felt conversational. Like, I wanted the book to be like this, like right. you and yeah, I talking. Of course. And uh, Richard Sibold, uh, incredible photographer I've worked with in Rush, uh, he basically moved into the, the attic of my, my home. My wife gave up her uh, uh, art studio, and he took it over for about eight months, and 30,000 photographs later, wow. uh, we began the work of, of sifting through all the material we had gathered. Um, there's, there's something about the music of Rush that permeates through pop culture, and uh, in the last few years, there's been a couple of things that have come up where, where Rush is at the forefront again uh, with Ready Player One when that book came out. Right. Um, when I read that, I was like, and then when I saw the movie, and I mean, obviously the book was better, the movie <laughs> was still good, but, and then in the movie Fanboys, I don't know, right. I mean, and th there's just something about Rush for me that it's like the secret handshake. If you know this, then you and I can be friends. Right. But but it, it seems like it's getting another wave. And I, and I know that you know this this has been a band that you've been involved with for a long, long time. It's it's your life's work. Right. But you, is it kind of funny for you to look and see this come in waves again and go, oh, here it comes again. Some some younger kids are discovering it. And... Uh, yeah, no, it's it's really surprising and lovely at the same time. Uh, I love when people send me, you know, the, the, this week's Rush references, yeah. especially in television shows. Like, I know that uh, Brian Koppelman, who writes Billions, is a big yeah. Rush fan. Yeah. And, and he sneaks Rush references in uh, 
whenever he can. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it always puts a smile on our faces. Uh, we talk about this. We send them around to each other, and we have a giggle over it. But at the same time, it's nice that uh, we have such a fantastically dedicated fan base. That yeah. In their own way, they feel like they want to give something to us back. So that's that's pretty special relationship between an artist and uh, and its audience. And it's nice to see that um, there's so many bands that are that are still at the forefront of metal today. Younger bands that still cite you as references. Like I have to bring up Mastodon, uh -huh. one of my favorite bands, and uh, the guitar player is a really good friend of mine. And when we first met, it was the secret handshake thing. Oh, really? I was like, do you like Rush? Do you like Rush? And then our friendship grew over that. So oh, cool. it's nice to see another generation of prog, if you will, mm -hmm. still uh, still paying homage to you guys. Yeah, I have so many musicians that have been coming out and uh, young bass players that come to these signings and it's really pretty heartwarming. Mm -hmm. And they're, some of them are pretty young too. Yeah. So you see like nine, 10, 11 year olds that have been just studying the music and really are thrilled to come out and say a few words. And so that bodes well, I think. There are more musicians, there are more young musicians than ever before making music so i hope that all adds up to something good in the future i've got a 14 year old that uh, blasts rush at home and oh, really? uh, it drives his mom crazy so things are we're, we're on all a right. good path we're on we're on schedule <laughs> thanks for taking the time